This rant has been a long time coming. It's a controversial topic. This is my opinion, developed over about eight years experience in this hobby, and I know there are other reefers who also feel this way, but I expect there will be disagreement. It's been a huge concern of mine for a long time that we are too cavalier with marine life in a lot of different ways. My big beef is with retail sales of sick fish and dirty coral frags, with the onus of responsibility being put 100% on hobbyists to cure these animals when we shouldn't be sold sick animals in the first place. It's rampant in this hobby. I'm not talking about, for example, live rock. I'm talking specifically coral frags. There's no excuse for frags to carry invasive pests. None. Vendors have access to all the tools to deal with this, but we aquarists are expected as a matter of course to spend all kinds of money and time and effort doing something we might not be experienced with to try and rescue the unhealthy specimens we willingly accept in exchange for our money. I can buy and use fluconazole to rid my tank of bryopsis that's brought into my tank from, guess where, a vendor who can't be arsed to spend the money and time and do it in their own system before selling the coral. I can dip my zoanthid frags in hydrogen peroxide to get rid of algae, and 24 hours later, presto, the algae is gone. Why can't this be done at the retail level? Not to mention all the various types of pests we are expected to quote-unquote dip for. It doesn't get the eggs. And where did those eggs come from? Uh-huh. And when it comes to fish, we need more vendors to refuse to sell fish until they are healthy by doing pre-release quarantine. The guy I buy all my fish from is in the business of simply quarantining fish. I check his price list and pay him for the fish I want. He gets it from the wholesaler and quarantines it for three weeks with medication. Then I have a further week to pick it up. He has access to medications I don't. He has decades of experience that I don't. He knows how to get tricky fish to eat and I don't. He has dozens of tanks set up specifically for quarantine in space he has that I don't. The result is that I get healthy fish, and this is important. The risk of their death is far less because he's experienced and set up for quarantine and I am not. So it costs me a little more to get a healthy fish. This is far, far less cost than being sold sick fish and having to cure them before I dare put them in my tank. Don't get me wrong, I have put new fish into a 10 gallon observation tank after quarantine if they're particularly small or in some way vulnerable so that I can make sure they're ready for life in the big tank, grow them on for a while, make sure they put on some size and weight, get whatever they need. It's a matter of meeting the needs of the animal and not wasting their life. I've heard all the arguments from the retail side that turnover has to be quick so they don't lose money, how a certain percentage are expected to die, logistics, etc, etc, blah, blah, blah. All just excuses to hide behind the wall of indifference and continue doing what has always been done. I could be cynical here and say it's all about money, and maybe in some cases it is. But I believe there are vendors out there who would respond to demand for healthy livestock. Because my question is, would you rather pay a hundred bucks for a healthy yellow tang and have confidence that it can be added to your tank when you take it home because it's already gone through quarantine? Or pay 69 bucks for a sick one that then costs you a couple hundred dollars to cure if you're even able to cure it? Worse still, no attempt to cure it, but simply pop and drop, potentially wiping out all the other fish in your tank and adding a pest or disease you didn't have before. And seriously, for me, it is more about the out and out waste of marine life than the dollars because people, 
The oceans are in big trouble globally and it's going downhill fast. So if we take species from the ocean for our hobby, we better damn well take utmost care with them to preserve their life. Before long, we won't be able to just get another one. The other problem that leads to needless death of marine life is impatience. In a hobby where patience is a foundation of success. People want their new reef tanks to be showpieces immediately, sooner if possible. Newcomers to the hobby have their impatience pandered to by sales of bottled bacteria so they can quote unquote instantly cycle a brand new tank and drop fish in from day two. Then they're sold dosing equipment and chemicals because they're told the corals are going to put immediately into a brand new tank are going to need those depleted elements to grow right away, like now, sooner if possible. I'm not saying tanks can't be jump-started because they can, but only by people with the experience to notice and handle problems that come along and who are ready for the high level of early days maintenance you have under these circumstances. And only, in my opinion, for temporary use, such as for a hospital tank or observation tank. If you want a reef tank, let it cycle properly. Properly cycled tanks don't kill stuff. Why is it so hard to accept that zero ammonia and nitrite is required, not optional? I'm not saying any of this to point fingers. What's done is done. What matters now is that we think longer and consider more carefully how to set ourselves up for success, with the definition of success being that the precious animals we keep can live out their full lifespans in our care. There will always be mistakes and accidents as things go along. Shit happens. Equipment fails. But if we act in a manner to be sure we start properly, we can at least give ourselves more of a chance of success and do what we can to address this senseless, avoidable waste of marine life. If you hate what I'm saying here, please take a minute to realize I'm finally speaking out about something we all know is happening, but many of us refuse to acknowledge. As long as there are still fish and coral frags available for sale, it doesn't seem like there's a problem. But if you pay attention to discussions on reefing forums and YouTube live streams where it seems like everyone suddenly has ick in their tanks, or doesn't know if diatoms will hurt the fish in their two-week-old tank, or wants to know if fluconazole works to remove bryopsis, you can see what's happening. There is a way to slow down this tsunami of problems, and I think it's time to start by making a stand and refusing to accept substandard merchandise in the form of sick animals and dirty coral frags, and seek out those vendors who not only supply healthy and clean merchandise, but are also willing to guarantee their animals won't cause catastrophe in our tanks. I want coral vendors to start cleaning up their systems so they can tell us they treat regularly for pests in their own tanks before selling to us. I want this information to be prominently displayed on the home page of their website or at the front door of their shop. So once in a while a flatworm gets through, better for them to honor a guarantee by supplying for free the required treatment to the unlucky reefer and thus enhance their reputation than to keep infesting our tanks with pests that they are 100% able to deal with on their own premises before the product leaves the store. I suggest we start asking before we buy how that vendor treats for pests, quarantines fish, ensures clean coral frags are supplied, what their guarantee is. Then vote with your wallet based on the answers. I want to promote those vendors who have these practices in place. There have to be some out there. So if you know of any, please leave me their info in the comments below and I'll check them out and do a follow-up video promoting them. So the other problem, impatience. This is something that I believe can only be solved through education and ultimately experience. 
If a local fish store tries to provide guidance to a new hobbyist in order to encourage them to be patient, they can't control whether that person goes home and buys jumpstart stuff online. So they risk not only losing a sale, but also potentially a customer. I completely sympathize with local fish stores these days trying to deal with people who not only want it all, they want it now, <laughs> with apologies to Queen. They can only try to consistently steer people in the direction of success. But if someone wants to take shortcuts, there's nothing the average local fish store can do, unfortunately. This might be where YouTube comes in. Those of us who make videos and have viewers need to seriously consider our responsibility when it comes to showing people how we do stuff. I do weird DIY and use equipment for tasks it isn't made to do. But the DIY I do doesn't endanger my reef. What I do is look for creative, inexpensive ways to solve problems. My solutions aren't for everyone and often aren't long term. But <laughs> I'm getting off track here, trying to explain that I take my responsibility really seriously. And if I'm wrong about something or offer information that proves incorrect, I do my utmost to acknowledge and update wherever possible so people aren't guided incorrectly by something I've said or done. I've removed videos because of this. Something that really bugs me is seeing videos where fish are popped and dropped without even an attempt at acclimation. Then the YouTuber says, don't do this, even though I just did it. Then the fish die or infect the tank and more fish die. And then guess what? They repeat this entire performance the next time. And I'd be willing to bet there is a lot of animal death as a result of these practices that stays hidden. This drives me nuts. So finally, if what I'm saying here makes you feel resentful, please, please think about why that might be. We all have a part to play and even tiny shifts in attitude and action go a long way towards making positive changes. We are all in a perfect position to start this wave. As it happens, I'm going to a frag swap next weekend and I'll be asking some of these questions. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And I hope I haven't offended too many people, but this really did need to be said.